Time for the market report here in studio. Zach Ashmore with all the numbers and more. Zach? Thanks, Mike. Markets on an upswing following a slight downturn. Livestock the only loss, but by just a tiny bit, while row crops growing in price in this new year. Let's take a look. Last week's only loss, live cattle down less than half a cent, so no big moves there. Last week's biggest gain, other than lumber, up $165. Corn, up 80 cents, followed by soybeans at 44 and a half cents. So, row crop shooting up again, price is pretty massive. Not all too surprising, that's fairly normal this time of year post-harvest in the U.S. However, there are some other factors compounding prices, namely supply chain issues, transportation to be exact, along with continuous COVID lockdowns. Market analysts Chris Swift and Angie Setzer break it down and give us a bit of perspective of what's going on. Things like the transportation and distribution channels have been messed up in just about every single aspect of, of moving product across the United States and from our rail, from our shipyards to our railheads and into our trucks to get it to the actual place of business. The, the downtimes are incredible. The restrictions that are placed upon a lot of these are really causing most of this. So we're really not seeing much in shortages of the actual product, just the inability to get it from where it needs to, from where it is to where it needs to be. I would say this, how China manages their zero COVID policy as we move ahead. Obviously, we've seen Omicron, uh, you know, across the globe has really kind of created this huge surge in cases, and then we've seen things kind of mellow out and move on. You know, how that works in China and what we see happen after the Olympics is something I'm really going to be watching. You know, as it, we've already seen it. We had one positive case of Omicron in an office building in Beijing last week, and they locked down the office building. No one got to go home. So it'll be interesting to see just how they proceed and what that does to overall demand, plus supply, the ability to unload um, ships at Poor, you know, all of these things. So I, I think it probably just kind of exacerbates the the transportation issue, uh, but it's definitely something I'm I'm watching. I would think soybeans uh, could cause an issue. I mean, there's been a lot of conversation that the the reduction in restaurant eating has already taken place. We saw that happen in December with a large percentage down, and what we've seen, you know, it, it early on in COVID was the reduction in restaurant eating, and some of that really kind of made the Chinese population transition away from maybe more in the way of meat to, to that of a diet of, of maybe more poultry, noodles, things of that nature, which is part of the reason we've seen their wheat demand increase so much. Um, but obviously, you know, soybeans are the obvious answer. And then corn, you know, simply because I feel like we have this large amount of risk premium just kind of lurking in the market with the idea that China is going to swoop in and start buying up all, all of this extra corn. Um, so I'm definitely watching both corn and soybeans when it comes to that. And I think wheat demand continues to increase because they've discovered how delicious bread and noodles are, and there's no going back from that. One of the important things we have to, to think about is, is the Brazilian or the South American growing region is up and down. You know what I mean? So we have a very widespread um, sort of maturity sort of phase and in, in growth that takes place. You know, you obviously you have Mato Grosso, Mato Grosso and points to the north that started planting in September, while Rio Grande do Sol, Argentina, you know, they just planted or are just wrapping up on planting. And, and so you have um, some instances where we could see some of these rains really kind of save or at least cap that damage that we've been seeing. Other areas, obviously, it's it's too little too late. They planted early this year because we thought the monsoonal moisture was going to kick in. And so you've seen that big reduction and so the million dollar question becomes how much does the north offset the south because the north did have nearly ideal um, growing conditions and and so here we sit um, you know most of the folks in the know that are down there that are working with folks down that way are still in that upper 137 139 now granted that's a heck of a lot lower than where we were at the 145 to 150 you know, sort of uh, potential level that we were sitting at. So it is something that that is definitely, we're going to continue to watch it. What I find most intriguing right now is the Brazilian farmer, you know, taking after the, the U.S. farmer to a certain extent in the sense that they sold too much last year. They were almost 60% sold by this point in the growing season last year, only to watch the market surge up another dollar, two dollars. This year, they're below average on sales, and that's kind of causing some issues with the cash market now. They've definitely shut off sales as the, the market started trade higher and these drought talk, the drought talk has come into play. 
And so that's influenced basis. It's brought some business back to the U.S. It's helped kind of support this thing. But we're only about 2% harvested. So we'll see here in another four or five weeks. We'll get a better feel for what's taking place. But so far, you have zero and you have hero when it comes to, <laughs> to yield reports out of, out of South America, out of Brazil especially. So we'll see which one wins when we get to the end. Nobody has had an opportunity so far to reload at a new production cycle at any lower prices. We ended up this year uh, in December with some of the higher prices for corn, and now we're ending some cycles. We're, we're finishing off our wintertime cycle and fixing to go into a more springtime cycle, and we'll still need some of those products. And, and we're just finding that there's been no break whatsoever for our producers to, to replenish those uh, in inputs that we need. What we're looking at right now, if you can wait, it's always cheaper in the back end right now. We had a full inverted market today where the March contract traded the highest price. And uh, again, it, you would like to be able to go out and buy some of the cheaper grain in the future, but we know that these cycles are ending. Nobody has been able to buy grain at a cheaper price. So they're just having to come back and reload those feed bins again with the highest price corn there is. And that's it for a deeper look into the markets. Looks like the same issues we saw last year are still hanging around. Supply chain, weather, stocks, and it looks like they're not leaving anytime soon. That could change and quickly, but suffice to say the year already looks interesting. I'll keep an eye on it.